Well, good evening, listeners of the Saturday show. We have Marlene Halliday and Fiona McGregor online with us, and we're going to have a wee chat with them about a new show that they're doing on Independence Live, and it will also be going out on Indie Live Radio. It's called the Indie Jigsaw Show, and in actual fact, the first one, Went out yesterday, Friday, at 11 o'clock. <laughs> I was a little bit late to the party by um, suggesting that we could have done an interview beforehand, but there you go, these things happen. Anyway, so, Fiona, Marlene, one of you, want to tell me what this is all about, please? On you go, Marlene. <laughs> oh, I was just about to say, on you go, Fiona. <laughs> okay, well, I'll start, and, and, and Fiona, you just leap in. Um, uh whenever whenever you realize i've forgotten something yeah so the indie jigsaw show um i mean what's behind this is that fiona and i have, have moved from be, doing mostly um uh, programs just in audio for for the radio to doing them uh, video programs that will go out over indie live indie live stream indie live media so um so the indie Indie Jigsaw Show. So the idea is here we are, hopefully Scotland moving towards being an independent nation again. And we thought, well, it would be a good idea maybe to just have a program where we looked at the pieces that we're going to need as an independent nation and how we're going to put them together. Um, mm. And uh, and 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 that's where that's where we're that's where we're starting off. So Fiona, do you do you want to say a bit about what uh, what happened yesterday? <laughs> Yeah. Well, yes, yesterday was the, the what would we call it, the, the launch of uh, the Indie Jigsaw show. So yes. I don't know if anybody listening to your show, James, would have seen it. I'd like to think so. Uh, but if they missed it, then they can catch up on Independence Live's YouTube channel because it's now up there and you can get it. We can watch it on demand. Um, there's also going to be a podcast version mm -hmm. and it was also broadcast on Indie Live Radio on Friday as well at the same time. So yes, the first show all about Trident. Um, it was celebrating the anniversary, the first anniversary of the TPNW, which we've been struggling with, <laughs> but it is the Treaty for the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. And we had three members of Scottish CND on there um, who were the star attraction, if you like, was Marlene interviewing the three from uh, CND. And then we had various little clips as well which um, were kind of scene setting. We had a bit of the debate from Holyrood and we also had a little bit of footage from the launch of a report by Re Rebecca Johnson and the response from Kirsten Oswald to that report. So it was there was a lot of bits of the jigsaw um, mm -hmm. as, as regards Trident were covered in that, that show. And yeah. I think to a certain extent, um, stuff like Trident, kind of gets lost a little bit and then the background noise at times you know because everybody knows where it is um but it's been there for so long that it's not people forget about it but they just don't really think about it because yeah. it's part and parcel of the landscape and for me personally i like to think that whenever something like this comes around and it gets highlighted it maybe reaches out to people you know and maybe makes them take a step and think Hang on a second. What is this all about? I think you're right there, um, uh, James. And and I think one of the, part of that is that um, there are. I, I'm sure there are people who want Scotland to be rid of nuclear weapons. They're not necessarily all people who um, are are as yet convinced about Scotland being independent. Yeah. But if you start seriously thinking about it. Actually, it doesn't take too long before you have to acknowledge that, you know, snowballs chance in hell of of uh, <laughs> Westminster doing away with um, nuclear weapons, and therefore the same for us getting rid of it from uh, from Scotland. And yeah. and one of the one of the main things that I discovered, you know, talking doing this interview was um, the, the the treaty for prohibition of nuclear weapons. Um, Scotland would in all likelihood sign that treaty as soon as we're independent. Mm -hmm. And and then that means that the UN would place at Scotland's disposal experts, 
experts for nuclear weapons and disarmament, but also experts in negotiations right. who would then be with our government when we were then setting up discussions with Westminster about how to go about it. And it, it would enable us to, to do something that we, we might manage anyway, but it'll be a lot easier. Yeah. It's one of the things that kind of annoys me with the nuclear sort of debate, shall we say, is that every so often they have these kind of big meetings, you know, and they make these discussions and make these decisions and people sign up to it. And then five minutes later, they forget all about it, you know, and they just carry on doing what they've been doing before. And I really, really want a independence for Scotland. Not so much for me, you know, but for my nephews and nieces and great nephews and great nieces. Um, okay. But I also want them to be able to okay. live in a country where the threat of somebody dropping a huge, big, great nuclear bomb on top of us and wiping us all off the face of the earth is reduced. Absolutely. Well, one of the great things about the uh, things that, that I took from the discussion was Isabel, um, Isabel Lindsay had described that to disarm the, the, the warhead is the work of minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and once it's disarmed, and she described it as pulling a pin out, <laughs> which hopefully not a bit like a grenade where you pull out, but pulling a pin out. And um, then what you've got is a submarine yeah. with a whole load of disarmed war mm. and, and a whole load of radioactive material. And that is a, a huge problem for somebody to fix, but it's yeah. not necessarily for us to fix. You know, our issue is the fact it's armed. No, yeah. absolutely. Um, and I always think, you know, that, I mean, I can remember you know, as a as a lad growing up uh, through the sixties and seventies, the the sort of great CND, you know, movement then, and it kind of seemed to taper off. Although I don't really think it did as such, but it wasn't kind of in the media as much. Whereas over the last couple of years, it seems to be getting pushed more to the forefront again, and obviously you covering it for the new indie jigsaw show will help that movement along as well. I mean, interesting what you said about previous, you know, UN treaties and the, the, the carry on, well, the big five, um, you know, nuclear powers, mm -hmm. recognised nuclear powers, carry on. And and I mean, at the moment, Britain's, Britain's breaking one of those treaties because it's going to increase the number of uh, nuclear warheads. But the thing about this treaty is that the other UN nations, the ones who are not nuclear powers, they they, they know as well that, that that's what's happened in the past. And, and this treaty has come out of them saying, we've had enough of this. We're going to go ahead and we're going to make this happen ourselves. And, you know, we'll be, hopefully we can negotiate, come up with a treaty that we, as many of us as possible can rat, sign up to and then ratify. And that's what's happened. And, and part of, so it's the non-nuclear states that are driving this treaty. Mm -hmm. And the way that it's set up, um, it's whenever they do have one of these meetings, it will be a COP meeting. So COP one for the for the <laughs> nuclear, it's going to be COP one is is due to be in March. That that's set up so that civic groups are in, from various countries who have ratified it. They're they're invited to go along as observers and they can have input to it. So it does sound like it's a very different beast from yeah. from the previous ones. Yeah, so think, fingers crossed. Yeah, I'm, absolutely. I mean, it's just interesting when you're saying there, you know, COP1. Um, it's obviously we had COP26 yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. late last year yeah, in Glasgow. Yeah. Um, but you know what would be really, really great would be if Scotland became an independent nation and, yeah, we get rid of the nuclear deterrent. We know it's not going to happen overnight, but we also make significant strides against the global warming. That would be such a two great things for Scotland as an independent nation to move forward on. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And the, the, the two are kind of linked in a way, but the, um, the potential for Scotland to be a leader mm -hmm. in, uh, in both of those areas is, is huge if we can get free of the foot that is currently on our neck, yeah. <laughs> which is yeah. Westminster. So obviously, uh, talking about a uh, lane and the nuclear deterrent, Anything else? Um, not necessarily from the first show, but, you know, have you got anything else kind of planned over the coming weeks, you know? Well, well, yeah, James, and we've got the second uh, show is um, 
It's not planned in detail, but we've got our main guests lined up. They're going to be Iona Fife. Now, I think you may even have I interviewed Iona yourself on your oh, show. Yeah. yeah. So we've got Iona coming back. Uh, I've I've in, been involved in interviewing her before, so she's coming back, and we she's uh, she's coming along in the same interview with Eileen Budd, who is uh, illustrator. Yeah, and um, she's 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 just produced a she's come to the end of a very very big project called Ossian, where she's put together all the folklore, Scottish folklore, um, and uh, myths and legends around the figure of Ossian, and and she's illustrated it as well. So we've got Eileen and Iona. So obviously they'll talk about their own projects, but yeah. I want to get them uh, talking um, about just how they see. The kind of input that they have in that sort of more cultural, artistic side of Scotland, and how that can, um, well, ca can that help? Can that be put, you know, in the service of us mm -hmm. becoming independent? To what extent is that important? So, be interesting to hear what they have to say. I'm, I'm fascinated to hear what the, what they have to say as well, because when I was just thinking the other day that the flourishing of art associated with the Yes movement is quite remarkable. I mean, not just, you know, we've got writers, act, singers, actors coming out. That think of the slates, the stones, there's the Why Yes photo exhibition. There's so much that's just sort of mm. spawned by, by the, the energy of the Yes movement. And when you think about where's the unionist art, you mm. know, it, other than putting a, a, a union flag on a building or having a couple of spitfires go past, there really isn't anything. There's yeah. nothing new yeah. and fresh and yeah. creative and progressive and forward-looking and, and young. People like Iona and, and Eileen, they're, they're young, they're part of the future Scotland, and yeah. they're already making their mark. And I think it's yeah. wonderful that, that yeah. we can spawn that, yeah. that energy. Yeah. Haven't you got another couple of folk that you thought we, you might um, ask on that particular show, uh, Fiona? Uh, yes, I've... <laughs> None of none of them are confirmed yet, but we oh. have ho have hoped to have a chat with um, Angus Shir Khan, who is a Scots lead poet, and we often play his his poetry and gets dropped in and and out in the um, in Indie Live Radio, and he's also on the YouTube channel. Independent Indie Live Radio's YouTube channel has he has his own channel, his own playlist on there, and um, so he is actually from Ardrossan Way. So I've asked him if he could maybe do some poems and send us some video of him reciting them in situ because you you can get too much zoom type footage mm. it'd be lovely to see some of scotland you know from people who who, who are in those places and um, we'd also um, we're hoping that you'll help us out james as well with maybe catching up with colin burnett because you interviewed him a while ago about his book and it would be lovely to see how that's going because he, he was another one who's championing yeah. the scots yeah. language um, literature. So hopefully yeah. you, you'll be able to help us with that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've also been having a wee think to myself. Obviously, we had a wee brief chat um, previously, Fiona, about, you know, maybe having a word with Colin. And I'd mentioned Ethel Smith as well. Oh, yes. Um, yes. And then I was thinking, do you know what? We could do another one with Frank, Frankie boy, Frank McGrorty. Mm -hmm. um, because his uh, books are now available as audio books, and mm -hmm. uh, also uh, a working class state of mind from Colin Burnett is now available as an audio book as well. You know, so there's new things to chat to them about with these things. But also, um, I was thinking, I've been getting a lot of uh, contact with uh, Scottish artists. Um, mm -hmm. Not necessarily using Scots language, mm -hmm. but they're, again, they're new, they're young, they're up and coming. So I'm planning to restart the uh, Saturday show artist interviews. So we could take bits and pieces from there as well. And if they're good enough for the Andy Jigsaw show, we, could, we could include them as well. So, that, that's, a, that's a great idea. And if, it, if there was something that was... Um... You know, if we could get some footage from them out and about or, you know, from wherever they are. And roving reporters, actually, that's something maybe your listeners could help us with. So roving reporters from any part of Scotland are welcome to get in touch with us. And if you've got some stories, things happening locally, particularly if they're independence related or activism mm. or just or, or arts, anything mm. like that, get in touch with us because we're, we're, we're open and, to offers at this stage. 
and it's a great way for people to to feel that they're maybe contributing something to the yes movement you know that at this point in time they're thinking to themselves i don't really know if i could do anything other than go to you know an AUOB march or whatever the case may be mm -hmm. but as you say if there's a wee thing happening locally for them you know and let's be honest everybody's got a camera phone these days you know uh -huh. i don't think it's going to have to be broadcast tip top quality in terms of the video but as long as it's presentable then they could do that and get that and and they're adding towards the yes argument so marlene will this be um a replacement for the daytime show completely or is the daytime show likely to come back in some kind of format well um it certainly evolved from the daytime show um you know certainly in from terms of going from audio to to, to video um I, I think it's also as as fiona and i are kind of you know working our way into doing an episode and then then planning them it's also evolving in terms of how we present it mm -hmm. um so it's it's evolved from it is it going to replace it probably what will happen is that um we, we do one and and it works well as audio mm -hmm. um standalone audio and and we think well we could put that onto we, we could just put that onto the radio um as audio and um not it wouldn't be the daytime show it would be the in the jigsaw show but yeah but you know i mean sometimes um something that's a video works very well as a video yeah. but it but it doesn't quite work as audio only so yeah maybe yeah. it's uh, maybe you know getting um um the other thing is that um Fiona does the jigsaw bits and pieces show for the still for radio, and maybe that's something another way in which material yeah. that we produce can get transferred back. That's still going the the bits and pieces show, and then that's essentially just lots and lots of topical clips. Mm. Um, but the the important thing with those is they, as well as being radio material, they also end up on both our podcast channels. So we've got the Podbean, which in fact you can get yeah. anywhere if you've got yeah. Apple, Pod, you, you've got it, Scottish Independence Podcast, and also SoundCloud. Um, so that's on demand audio. So people, if they've missed the show, then they've got access to it. And although having said that, we only do a sort of once a month roundup Mm -hmm. for the Podbean, and it's actually a weekly show of, of randomised clips yeah. Yeah. that goes through the month. But then the uh, the podcast potential for Indie Jigsaw Show is there as well. So although we've done a – it was it ended up being about an hour and a half, um, the first episode. We thought it would be maybe an hour, but we had enough to do an hour and a half. So I don't know how many people are still awake by the end, but, you know, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully they've stayed with us. But um, – what we've then done is is done a podcast edit of that because uh -huh. um, as Marlene says, there's some bits that just don't work yeah. uh, that are visual and um, you know a little bit of tweaking. But it was it was pretty much all of it. It was about an hour and twenty, I think, for the actual podcast version, mm -hmm. and that's what the radio played as well. So they got the the tailored version for audio. So yeah. hopefully that was that worked. Yeah, because I I kind of miss the daytime show. Um, it was one of the highlights of my week uh, back <laughs> as a, an um, an employed person uh, before I took my retirement. Um, on a Friday morning, I'd be sitting in the office working away on my computer with the headphones in. They'd be listening, you know, and people would come up and tap you on the shoulder and you take your earphones out and they'd be like, "What are you listening to? Is it this band? Is it that band?" And I'd be like, "No, it's a, a program called the Daytime Show. It's a chat show." Uh, <laughs> Talking. In fact, I think one of the times that happened was when you had the people in for the climate change. Oh yeah, uh, one you know, and you were stressing out about them getting there because the weather was so bad. Oh yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, yeah, that was when we still had the studio and we were waiting on them coming over from Edinburgh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember that. And at the same time, that morning there was a leak in the very top of the building, so I was sitting there with water dripping down on my head and. <laughs> not, not the best situation with electrical equipment <laughs> hanging around either. No, it, it wasn't, but it was quite topical to be talking about climate change and water. <laughs> yeah, so, so they, I was anyway. saying, you know, this was what it was, and they're just looking at me as if there was something wrong with me. Because yeah. yeah. I, I don't really think a lot of people don't really listen to radio when it's talk radio so much. Um, you know, they, they want to hear the music and stuff like that. That's fair enough. I They're think Radio 4 is going to be a bit worried to hear that from you. 
Well, there are obviously there are some well established, you know, talk radio uh things that were put out, you know, like LBC, you know, they they're pretty good, you know. Um, but in general, you know, people tend to want to listen to music, you know, as opposed to talk radio. But I've always enjoyed talk radio. Yeah, you know, yeah. People. I mean, one of the things that I do miss about not doing the moving over to this and not doing the, the straight uh, radio daytime show is is the music. Because, well, you know, of course, it was Val Gold and I who did that show together. You know, we did it for almost mm. two, uh, two years. So we picked it up from... Uh, end of 2019 it must have been and then did it all through the, all the lockdowns and uh, Val's the one who who really could you know a, a moment's notice she could suggest a a, tra a music track to play and I'm 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 really not I'm um, up on that um, but I I did enjoy getting to know that and and actually I've got a, a big playlist now on my own um, on my own uh, you know iTunes which is most of the music that we we put on that show so I I do miss that side of it but um, mm -hmm. anyway pros and cons isn't it obviously this is quite an exciting uh, new venture for everybody um, you know independent independence live media and indie live radio as well as yourselves. Um, <laughs> Is there anything that has happened so far that you can share with us that was a real kind of hearty laughter moment because of something you've done or said that was a bit, you know, off the wall? Off the wall. I don't know if, don't know if the, about one individual one, but I have to say recording the six-minute promo took us nearly an hour <laughs> and it was hilarious. <laughs> So that is the most edited piece of film you'll ever see. And because we're just learning the, the technology, I mean, I, I'm using um, video editing software that well, you know, I'm making it up as I go along. Mm. So I notice even the, the difference between the very first thing I edited, which is much choppier, and yeah. I, it is getting slightly better. And video is much less forgiving than yeah. audio when yeah. it comes to that because yeah. you've got you, you'll see somebody move you know you might have knocked out a bit of dialogue but yeah. you're also the, they're not in the same position um <laughs> and then audio it's interesting just you, you get an appreciation of the different qualities because i listen to i take the audio off after i've done the editing i take the audio off and i put it into audacity and i listen to it and there's yeah. things that you don't notice when it's video because you're watching stuff yeah. and you listen to it you think my god you know, there's a chair scraping over there there's a cough <laughs> over here there's a bang over there and i go and take all that out and yeah. then put it back onto uh, put right. the, the soundtrack back onto yeah. the video and yeah. I doubt if anybody would ever notice, but um, I notice, you know, having listened to it, and the, and it's the the edited vod, um, audio that we use on the radio and the podcast. Because if you're only listening to the the audio, you notice all these yeah, things. Yeah, it's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have to say, ladies, I, I'm looking forward to being able to do little bits and pieces for you. Um, Great. And I'm sure you're both looking forward. Uh, to more successful shows um, <laughs> other than the first one. Um, so just want to tell everybody, of course, that every, is it going to be every Friday at 11 o'clock we'll have an Indie Jigsaw and Indie Live Radio or will it be sort of every other week or? Well, at the moment, mm -hmm. it's going to be uh, once a month on the first Friday of the month at 11 o'clock. Um, that is partly because, as Fiona was just saying, she and I are just getting used to yeah. the technology behind it, and you know, working our way through that. Um, and how I, how how we're thinking about it is that you know, because hopefully, as the year goes on and for too long, the independence campaign will be ramping up. And mm -hmm. when that happens, then we've got um, we've got plenty of scope to to increase it to to do it more frequently, and you know, go from once a month to twice a month, and that may depend, though, on having other contributors. Yeah. Um, it's a lot. I, I mean, I know I've been doing, you know, a weekly show with Val for over over mm. two years, but that that takes a lot of time and effort. Um, and and I'm, I, I, it would be it'd be more pleasant all round, and actually, it would be a better program if we mm. had other contributors um, yeah. c coming in and providing, you know, an interview or a mm. conversation. Yeah. Like yeah. like this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the, the other thing that we've got though that might might fill the gap a little bit, then I mean the, the indie jigsaw show monthly, we've also got another show that we're just starting, the Mibby's Eye show. 
and that's also going to be monthly but um sort of in the middle of the month so really every two weeks you'll get something from us yeah. and that's yeah. going to be on independence live uh youtube it'll go up on tuesdays well, sort of the the thirdish tuesday in the month <laughs> at eight o'clock and the first show of that's going to be the 22nd so in about three weeks time yeah right. so that we're just debating whether we would maybe take the audio from that and also use it in the radio's friday slot so you've got yeah. a kind of every fortnight you've got something a bit like yeah. the daytime yeah. show that's possible yeah. um, although i have to say the maybe's i show has grown out of what was the yes group spotlight show on independent on indie live radio which was on a monday so yeah. there's options there yeah. Good. yeah well certainly i shall uh promote the life out of it whenever it's coming <laughs> up. I, I That's do, great. I do, I do with uh, pretty much everybody else who's doing a show on Indelby Radio. I'm a great believer in promoting other people. Um, but I just want to say a huge big thank you to both uh, yourself, Marlene, and Fiona for uh, having this wee chat with us and telling us a wee bit about the Indie Jigsaw show. And uh, I shall, as I said, be telling everybody about it, the entire world. And of course, uh, I missed the trick you know, um, because we should really have maybe done this last week. Um, so I apologise to you both for that. No worries. Better no late worries. than never, James. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Thank then. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>